Get more of you in there. People want more of you. More John King, they say. Yes, all the time. MJK. More John King. You're listening to Mike and John Got It Going On, a Livingston County-based podcast that's based in, well, Livingston County. And now, Mike and John. Still no heat today. No. Well, we'll get with, the space heater going. Well, yeah, I mean, the, but the furnace is... Uh, no. We're waiting I, on the part. I, I brought my sweater today just in case. Right. Uh, we have a really big, shiny announcement we're going to share with you this morning, so stay stay close for that. Very big news here on Mike and John Got It Going On. Also, we're going to talk about the uh, Alzheimer's Walk, yeah. the Walk to End Alzheimer's here in Livingston County, getting bigger and better than ever. Yep, coming up in September. We went to a planning meeting yesterday, and uh, we'll be uh, talking more about that coming up. And... Uh, Anything else we got going on today? Oh, we got so much we going got so on. Much going so on, much, we, we can't just talk about it all now. No, not now, because no. it's news time now. It is news with time. With John King and Gigo News. All right, uh, here's what's happening. Gigo News brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in Brighton. Jury deliberations are entering a third day in a trial that centers on a plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. The Associated Press reports no verdict was reached Tuesday, hours after U.S. District Court Judge Robert Yonker turned down the jury's request for trial transcripts. Transcripts aren't available yet, but even if they were, the judge said jurors should not have them. He said instead they have to rely on their memory. Adam Fox, Barry Croft Jr., Daniel Harris, and Brandon Caserta are charged with a kidnapping conspiracy. Prosecutors said the conspiracy against Whitmer was fueled by anti-government extremism and anger over her COVID-19 restrictions. Another man, Ty Garbin of Heartland Township, who pleaded guilty, said the goal was to get Whitmer before the fall election and create enough chaos to create a civil war and stop Joe Biden from winning the presidency. Defense lawyers attacked the government's investigation and the use of a crucial informant, Dan Chappell. They claimed Chappell was the real leader, taking direction from the FBI and keeping the group on edge while recording them for months. 124 school districts in Michigan, including all five public districts in Livingston County, will save about $8 million in interest thanks to legislation signed into law earlier this week. Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed Senate Bill 618 this week, allowing for the adjustment of the school loan revolving fund interest rate to 1.19%. That fund assists schools in their borrowing needs for debt service payments. When the fund was created back in 2005, a 3% floor was established with the lower interest rate the 124 school districts participating in the program, including Brighton, Heartland, Howell, Fowlerville, and Pinckney, will begin saving immediately. And an opportunity for students in Michigan's 8th Congressional District to showcase their artistic abilities is underway. Democratic Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin Tuesday announced the opening of the 2022 Congressional High School Art Competition for students in grades 9 through 12 who reside or attend school in the 8th District. All who are interested are invited to prepare their work for submission during the month of April. The winning entry will be displayed in the U.S. Capitol for one year. Entry details and links are posted at mikeandjohnpodcast.com. And that's what's going on. You, what? you know, I thought I was going to be the one to be able to make the announcement, but you, you snuck it in without... I, I didn't sneak it you, in. You, 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 you took... You took the shine. You took the stage. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers was the news sponsor. They're our new news sponsor. I did the news. Therefore, I had to say, Gigo I, News brought to you. But I thought it was going to be a big old announcement. But how was just... I supposed to do the news and not say when Cooper and Binkley Jewelers has committed to sponsoring news here on Mike and John Got It Going On? I had to follow through on the commitment. Well, I thought it was supposed to be a big announcement yeah. first, and then the news, but then then we could do the commercial part of it after the news, and you you just kind of took it took it all yourself. I was fulfilling the commitment that we made to Bar Bankley and Cooper and Bankley Jewelers because they made a commitment to yes, us. Yes, they did. They all did, right. and we do appreciate that. Yeah. Barb and Mark have been fabulous community supporters. Right, they've been great community uh, partners in doing things for the little guy, for charity, and everything else, plus being one of the best local jewelers in Livingston County. Well, yeah. Are we the little guy? <laughs> one of us is. Hey. Hey. <laughs> You're the big guy. Oh, right. You're the big guy, because <laughs> you, of course, stole the thunder. Well, yeah. But yes, we met with uh, Barb and Mark yesterday, and uh, they want to support the show, so we were like, yes, news is your spot. Right. Because people want to know the news. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers, downtown Brighton have been a big part of the community for years and years and John impressed Barb so much with the way he could pronounce go ahead Cooper and Binkley Jewelers 
Well, oh, yeah. oh, 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 Zagani. 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 Like he learned a new yeah. language. Zagani. Right. Zagani. Simon G. Well, we've been saying Simon, Simon G. G. <laughs> and Zagani. Just uh, a couple of the premier designers uh, whose uh, creations you can uh, get at Cooper and Binkley Jewelers. And you can find out more at cooperandbinkley.com. But they've got a big Mother's Day contest. That's that they Cooper do and Binkley Jewelers. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers. Yeah. 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 See, that's why you're the big guy. <laughs> right. I'm the little that's guy. Right. I'm the Simon G. To your Zagani. Zagani. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, now uh, don't be, don't be dissing Simon oh, G. I'm not. I wouldn't you diss know. Simon G. That's kind of. I wonder if that's kind of like an East Coast West Coast thing between those two. Zagani. Yeah, and Zagani and Simon G. They, I don't know. they go at it. I'm not maybe, sure. maybe they're. Maybe they're coming up with a duet, yeah. a combo. <laughs> Maybe a, they're going to do a Simon with a G bullet to the top of the charts. It's Simon G and Zagat. Or perhaps they'll start their own jewelry podcast. Yeah, that, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, I've never seen anybody as into jewelry as much as uh, as Barb Binkley is. She right. travels the world. Yeah, her and Mark to get designs for Cooper they, Binkley Jewelers right. in downtown Brighton. They go right to the source, and uh, of course, uh, you can get an awesome selection. You can browse that selection online at cooperandbinkleyjewelers dot com, or better. Stop in and see for yourself why they're unparalleled in customer service. Absolutely. Yeah. Cooper Binkley Jewelers, an unparalleled, exceptional jewelry experience. And of course, we're also brought to you in part by our friends at Firehouse Doors and our community spotlight today. Yesterday, uh, after the show, we went over to uh, Crystal Gardens for the Walk for Alzheimer's right. um, breakfast, get-together, information gathering, and put a team together, which we're going to do for Mike and John, got it going on. But Nicole Colley, development manager from uh, End Alzheimer's. Yeah, the Walk to End Alzheimer's. Uh, is joining us right. in just a second here, as soon as we get her away from the kids. Right, she did say <laughs> that there was the possibility of... Uh, uh, good morning. Hi, Nicole. It's Mike and John. Good morning. Are the crazy kids uh, taken care are of? Are they under control? They or? are uh, corralled downstairs at the moment. I'm All locked right. upstairs, hoping they'll stay contained. Right. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. You had to lock yourself away from the kids just to talk to us. <laughs> My oldest is six. I have three currently, so oh. mornings are a little crazy. Yeah, I can now. understand. Yeah. yeah. It's been so long for us with the with the, those age groups that we, we kind of forgot or yeah. we, we tended to just diss it out of our memories. Yeah, don't worry. When they get to be teenagers, it all calms yeah, it's down. All easier. Oh, it's so much easier. <laughs> I feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> so what a what a nice gathering yesterday at Crystal Gardens to uh, not only get the word out about the walk for this year, but other things. Uh, <laughs> do you really got to wave the mug around? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Other things going on here in Livingston County. And the walk, we're, we're looking at it. It used to be just in downtown Brighton or Brighton kind of thing. It was the Brighton walk, yeah. uh, you know, to end Alzheimer's. Uh, and this year you're transitioning and, and you know, it, it, it's sort of uh, coming into its own. It's now the Livingston walk to end Alzheimer's. That's right. We've, we've kind of always pulled from a little bit of everywhere, but we wanted to make it kind of... Uh, more inclusive and more of that wide county feel and we wanted to keep growing countywide so we made the official move this year and you know and yesterday at the planning breakfast you showed the the numbers uh, the fundraising numbers through the years from when you first started i think in 2011 right yeah yeah, yeah. and how those numbers just each year had gone up obviously covid kind of interrupted that but last year you were able to get back into in person and, and that was such a great event uh, and the numbers, you know, look like they're 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 back on the rebound. And I think this year the expectation is is that uh, really going to uh, make that even even a higher level. Yes, yes, it's it's been crazy growth over the years. You know, every year when I I kind of touch back on this each year around this time when I put these events together to kind of kick the year off, and it just blows me away every year how much this has grown. Because you know, people think small town feel right, but like right. we're not. Really that small of an area, Livingston County has this tendency to really come together for things, and there's so many people around here that care about this. It just keeps exploding. Well, and so obviously the the fundraiser going for various projects and uh, research being one of the key things that uh, that the money goes to in these events. So, can you give us any maybe update on where things are at or where this research is being done? Yeah. I'll touch on it really quick just because you know I'm not I'm not a researcher so I try not to go too specific so I'm not saying the wrong things right. but um the kind of the the two biggest things back in June we got a really really exciting announcement um about a new drug that was officially approved by the FDA there was a lot of kind of back and forth about it at first because 
it's it's not something that's for everybody, right? It's it's something that is only 20% effective and only for a select group of people um, kind of thing, like it's got to be early enough. So I think in some ways it was a bit of a disappointment in that way, but I think we have to remember, too, that um, every disease that has, like, a drug or a cure out there started somewhere, and the fact that we went years and years and years with nothing, and this was, like, the first actual treatment that alters the disease itself and doesn't just treat symptoms was like the huge first step that we needed and oftentimes when you look at history with drugs and other diseases once they got that first one um, it was kind of the building block that they needed to keep going after that so we're really excited about what the future brings with that right and I think um, you know having this drug and like you said you went from nothing to something so that's an improvement yeah. and then putting this out to wider use the, the the data that comes back from that wider use will hopefully spur on additional research and additional advances. Exactly, exactly. When you look at uh, this is obviously it's something that, you know, we've all known somebody or known of someone that has suffered from Alzheimer's or dementia. And it's it's one of those things where it's so, it can be so progressive so quick that having something is better than where we were at before. So uh, what, you know, we, we, I guess, and I want to say to that point, you know, we heard some stories yesterday at that breakfast. Some people got up and talked about their personal experiences with this disease and just how, uh, you know, how devastating it can be. Uh, and yeah. for, for folks to become caregivers uh, to their loved ones, and it's, you know, that in and of itself is a, you know, can be an exhausting uh, you know, role to be placed in, but then at the same time, the emotional toll that the disease takes on people. Uh, and um, they were just some really, um, you know, heart rendering uh, stories that we heard yesterday of folks talking about how this disease has this impact. And and so beyond research, which is important, obviously, the the other part of what, uh, you know, the, the money that's going to be raised at the, at the Walk to End Alzheimer's uh, is going to be for support services for caregivers and others. That's an important component of this. Exactly. And I think that, you know, everybody thinks of the general things like, oh, they must have support groups or they probably do some education. But I think that most of um, the community and most communities in general, not just Livingston County, don't realize um, how many things we offer and how many things we do and how detailed that really gets. And so um, as many times as we can get presentations, different places and kind of be able to present those resources to the public, because I can't tell you how many times I meet somebody that, for the first time that tells me, oh, my gosh, I, I would have known about this stuff three years ago and it's just heartbreaking to hear that when you know that we have things that could have at least helped along the way yeah i mean the the, the biggest part is uh, you pointed out in the meeting yesterday was that uh, you have people in our generation that have you're raising kids and then taking care of parents the, the sandwich generation if you will taking care of uh, your parents and your kids at the same time while still trying to maintain sanity for yourself and exactly. having those resources to go to, that's where some of this funding, as John mentioned, is going. And that's that's great. We need the resources. We it's almost like you need an Alzheimer's hotline. You yes, know, to, there, to is say, there is one. Ah, <laughs> see, I didn't see. I did not know that. Now we know. You want to yes, throw that number? Yes. Uh, throw that number at us. Yes, absolutely. So if you remember nothing else from today, I want everybody to remember the hotline because that's like the number one resource. It's yeah. open like. And 24-7, it's completely free, and it's for anybody. Um, so that number is 800-272-3900. Um, and so, yeah, definitely jot that down. It's all over our website and stuff as well. Um, and, I mean, like you guys said, I, I do just want to touch really quick on those those caregiver numbers that you mentioned us talking about yesterday because I think we're, we're really trying – focus on that specifically this year. It's something that, you know, historically with, with our events and with the association, we've been very heavily, you know, uh, senior community focused, healthcare focused, and that's, that's absolutely wonderful. And we're going to keep those relationships. But one thing that we want the rest of the community to see is that it's really affecting our entire community, all of our families, our whole workforce. And so the, the stat that you mentioned about the sandwich generation, um, we kind of went over yesterday what a little bit of that looks like, but we, we have this report specific to caregivers in the workforce, and that tells us that six out of 10 people that are caregiving are also working on an average of 35 hours per week. So those are people that are working a lot while still trying to care for a loved one, and that sandwich generation that you mentioned um, makes up 
one quarter of those caregivers. So that's a lot of people that are just kind of stuck in the middle trying to figure out how to keep their sanity, like you said, and take care of their own kids and take care of their parents and what can we do to help those people. So, you know, a part of yesterday's meeting was, uh, you know, sort of laying out these numbers, laying out, uh, you know, how uh, important this issue is. And then looking forward to this year's walk, and um, and I know there's a couple of events. There's an event that's coming up Sunday, June 5th, uh, and that's the yeah. block party to end Alzheimer's. Talk about that. Yeah, so this is the first year that we're, we're doing kind of a, a bigger kickoff in Howell specifically. Like I said, we're trying to grow that countywide feel, so this is something we're starting this year. Um, and so we are going to be throwing a block party at the courthouse lawn of Howell on June 5th. Um, it's going to kind of coincide with some timing of the farmer's market, so there will be two fun things going on a bit at the same time, but obviously not in their space. We don't want to take anybody's space. Right. We're also been using the amp, so we have um, our DJ from the walk, Brett, that has been amazing the past few years, is going to be there for the day as well. We're going to get some um, live entertainment from the different school systems and whatnot, um, and then our hope is to get of the local food trucks there parked along Grand River as well, So, and South is going to come do some kids' activities with us, so oh, it should be a a fun family day. We're going to obviously Alzheimer's and walk resources there as well. Um, there will be a station for people to be able to register for the walk in person if they want to. So it should be a fun day. Yeah. And then the walk itself coming up September 24th in downtown yeah. Brighton. Yes, and that one, um, I know I said it yesterday too, but it's a it's a huge family-friendly event. It's um, one of the things I mentioned yesterday that I, I keep telling everybody, uh, something that stuck with me from last year. We had Chuck Yannicka for the first time as our MC last year, so he's recently signed back on for this year. We're really excited about that. Um, but he said during our podcast afterwards, um, it's really cool to see how many intergeneral relationships there are, inter intergeneral relationships. So, like, there's... When you go through the walk, there's hundreds and hundreds of people. I mean, in 2019, we had almost a thousand people on Main Street. Last year, we were back up to 750 already. It's it right. felt like almost normal. And you look around and you see kids in strollers, and you see people carrying babies, and you see all the way up to the grandparent generation. And there's just there's everybody there, and everybody's there to be there for each other and to celebrate the year. And it's a really really fun event. Well, and, and I think bringing back Chuck Gatick, I mean, he you know when he spoke last year and he talked about his his you know uh, experience with with Alzheimer's and his family and his loved ones, and I mean, and he spoke from the heart, and and he talked about that as well. That 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 point of like we think of this as an old person's disease, and mm -hmm. um, and yet you know we know things about like early onset, uh, so it's not necessarily that, but even just the fact that the ripple back that it has through entire families, it it, it, it has an intergenerational impact. Uh, and so that's something that, you know, when you see the event, like you said, when you see everything from, you know, people in strollers to all ages, uh, it really brings that home. Yeah. And I think we even saw a few pets in the in the walk as well, right. dressed up and everything. I mean, it's it, with the uh, with the purple for Alzheimer's. It, it, it was amazing at how many people had shown up that you had in the, uh, the footage. Uh, that oh, you yeah. showed, showed yesterday, and uh, I, th I think we can top that this year. And people are so amped up to get outside and do some things, and this is another good way to uh, get out and do something and to help out at the same time. Yep. So at this point, Nicole, it's uh, you're just looking for people to form walk teams to help do the yep. fundraising, and uh, so if people are interested in doing that. Uh, how can they go about that? What's the best way? So our website for Livingston specifically is act. Alz. Dot org slash Livingston, so they can they can go there. They can also find us on Facebook and walk to end Alzheimer's. We have a local Facebook group that we update frequently. Um, so there's there's both of those ways there, um, and there it's a completely free thing to register for. They're to register their team. They can name it after a loved one, after their business, kind of however they'd like to approach it, and then just invite their family and friends to join them. So it's um, not something that's incredibly overwhelming or anything like that it's an easy way to kind of dip a toe in the pool and help out and then some people get really into it their first year and some people just kind of come to see what it's all about and then they love it so much that they get more into it the next year so it's just a it's a fun way to get involved right i mean last year was the first year that i attended the walk and uh it was just a phenomenal experience and and just to to see that uh, that community connectedness 
Uh, and you're right. I think, you know, uh, when people come out and see this event for, you know, uh, the great event that it is, and it's, it's, it's bringing together people in a way that's important, but raising money, raising awareness. And um, I think that you're right. They, they, the, the enthusiasm of it is something that will, will sort of, you know, take hold and, and go from year to year. And I think we'll see more of that. Well, and when you see the numbers, too, it's, it's not only the people that are uh, affected directly by Alzheimer's, but as you mentioned with the, the sandwich generation, those that are caring for a loved one, uh, the time that they have to take off work or drop things to go help a loved one and therefore taking time off work, it, it really is a domino effect. So having information and, and help at the touch of a phone uh, is, is great to get the information out or to find out about if you're in that situation or know somebody who is. And this is, uh, again, another great way to find out more information about uh, where to go when that time comes or if that time comes. Absolutely. I mean, and to that point, in terms of the people that are, you know, having those issues where they're trying to take care of somebody, so they're leaving work early, or sometimes maybe even cutting back hours, or retiring early, and that kind of thing. I think one thing to keep in mind too, as there's like businesses listening, is that we can help businesses as well. So whether it's something as simple as having a packet of resources put together, so that an HR department has something readily available if somebody, you know, comes to them and is having this issue, and they can say, please call the Alzheimer's. All these ways help um so whether it's something like that or whether it's hosting an education program and educating employees um that's definitely um other ways that we can help too all right and again people want more information whether it's a business individuals that want to start a team uh they can go to uh the website throw that address out for us once more yep our local walk website act.alz dot org slash living in um and then my email is on the website as well and so i realize like my technical role is the walk manager but i'm definitely really passionate about getting the resources and people as much as i can to if anybody question about definitely feel free to email me about All that right. stuff too well, Nicole, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, you know we were uh, you know uh, happy to be at the at the planning uh, event yesterday and 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 see all this firsthand. And I think other people will will uh, come to uh, appreciate uh, everything that the organization does along this uh, front. And um, so we just urge everyone to kind of just uh, explore it if they if they're unsure, they want more information. Uh, we hope that uh, maybe this will have helped out today. So Nicole Colley, development manager for the uh, Walk to End Alzheimer's. Uh, in, in Livingston this year. It's, uh, we're expanding it. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it, thank Nicole. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, back to the kids now. Your husband can't handle this all by himself, you know. <laughs> We've been there. All right, Nicole, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. All right, bye. You know, uh, speaking of the meeting, we, uh, we have a gift basket that... Uh, oh, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. See, I knew you would forget. Let's get out our handy dandy. Well, right. let's get out the gift basket. Show the videos. So when we were at yesterday's, and we should set this up. So they gave out this gift basket. People entered. And um, actually, Mona Shand, our good friend Mona Shand, won her the gift basket. Gone. Yeah, so they drew her name. And, um, they, and she won the gift basket. And then she said, you know, she looked at it and said, hey, I think you guys should give this away on the podcast tomorrow. And um, got a little teacup. Yeah, it's got, we got some milk. Well, th I don't know that we should give this away. We're giving it away. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now See, we're changing the name of the yeah, podcast yeah. to Mike and Ike. <laughs> okay. Mike and Ike got it going on, but in the uh, in the Alzheimer's yeah. purple, we, we got, got some, some coffee, coffee. Yeah. a couple of different things of coffee, unforgettable blend. Yeah. Um, there's some, uh, and everything's purple, of course, because purple's the color for for right. Alzheimer's. Got a little try uh, Yeah. Ooh, black raspberry twist. Yeah. That sounds that good. That does sound good. <laughs> uh, so we got a nice little goodie basket, yeah, gift basket Some great here. stuff in there. Some right, uh, so forget-me-nots. You, you hold that. I'll hold the basket. Right. Or it's more like a bowl. <laughs> it's more like a bowl. What's in the bowl? The, the, what's right. in, John's going to reach All right. into our, All right. our laundry bin slash okay. uh, prize All entrance. Right. And the winner is okay. of the Walk for Alzheimer's basket. Yes. Uh, congratulations to Ann Richardson. Congratulations, so, Ann. Yeah, Ann Richardson, the winner of our Alzheimer's uh, gift basket here. And uh, so thank you for that. And uh, we'll, uh, I'm sure Ann is listening. You know, she's going to watch the podcast. and uh, Probably brag to all our friends. Yeah, as soon as she sees this, uh, she'll be all over it. 
<laughs> I don't we'll know be why. in touch with Anne. Anne is a great. Uh, she's a, a great supporter of, of the podcast yes, and the community. So Anne Richardson, congratulations. You know, I'm glad you mentioned supporters of the program yeah. because we have a few we have to thank. Yes, support. we do. Uh, Fairchild Lavelle and Rice CPAs. If you're looking for a firm that'll focus on your individual needs and always treat you like a client who matters, look no further. Fairchild Lavelle and Rice, large enough to offer you a full range of professional services, but small enough to give you the individual attention you deserve. You know, I, I'm not going to worry about them till it's tax time. Yeah, when is tax time? If you need more information and need to know when tax time is, call oh, wait. 517-231-5990. But, you know, actually, everyone waits till tax time. i got to get a CPA. Get ready for next year you, now. You, it would just Any time of year is a good time to get a hold of a quality CPA, and of course. Online. Yeah. F-L-C-P-A-S. Yeah. CPAs. I got it. Dot com. Right. Fairchild, LaBelle, and Rice. All right. Uh, other things we got coming up tomorrow... What do we got coming up tomorrow? The less you know. Oh, I'm sorry. The less you <laughs> the know. The less you know with Rich Pearlberg. Every time we talk to him, we know less. <laughs> or or, <laughs> or he knows how, less. He knows less than we know. We Every, don't want to tell him. That. Everybody ends up knowing less after that segment. <laughs> so, <laughs> Or you feel a little smarter. You just never know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You're after. like, I, what is but, happening? You know, some of the things that uh, we also, uh, uh, coming up this week, of course, Tiger's opening day. And, right. You know, if Was you've got Friday? Tickets, it's Friday. Yeah. Uh, Comerica Park, and it's it's not going to be promising weather for that. So, uh, is it uh, ever? I mean, rarely. We, we've been to a few, yeah. and we'll we'll kind of share our story from back in 1999. <laughs> I think it was. Yes, yeah, so we was did ask. Yeah, we did ask uh, yeah. about uh, you know your your opening day stories. And yeah. Uh, so if you've got one, yeah, go to our Mike and John Facebook page. You'll see see that, or you can email us if you like. Right. And that email address is, by the way, Mike and John. For the win, number four at, at gmail.com. Yeah. yeah, the number four, right? Which is where Chuck Gatica used to work. <laughs> That's true. So Mike and John for the win at gmail.com. Right. Um, right. I mean, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, want to thank Murphy's Family Auto, yeah. one of our uh, supporters here on Mike and John. Got it going on. Right, and uh, of course the folks over there, Dennis and Glenn and everybody else. Uh, we appreciate their work, and you will too. If you bring your car in, give them a call, 517-552-3040, murphysfamilyauto.com. Murphy's Family Auto, your car knows. You know what? A lot of folks are looking for an extra way to make a buck, and especially pet owners. <laughs> Thank God we're not in that we're situation. We're not in that situation because no. we don't need any extra money. Independently buddy. wealthy we are in a basement. Wait, let me check the funds. <laughs> Yep, we still have money. Excellent. We're good to go. New survey of 2,000 cat and dog owners by the pet insurer. Is your pet insured? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> many pets <laughs> reveals that one in four are trying to turn their pet into a social media sensation. More than uh, one third, well, 35% of them have created accounts yeah. just for their pets okay. to show them off. Now... Now, now we had posted a video of our pets, right. our dogs on the dogs on, on, of Gigo, the dogs, the Gigo dogs, the Digo dogs, Gigo dogs, not, yeah. or are they the Digo the, the, dogs? The, oh, I said the, the dogs that got it going on. Right, right. But they, <laughs> this is all inspired because of the case of Grumpy Cat. I don't right. know if you remember. Yeah, Grumpy yeah, of course, Cat. Grumpy. A lot of memes with Grumpy Cat, but yeah, those are his real net cat. worth yeah. reached an estimated one hundred million dollars before Grumpy Cat went to, well, he got to his ninth life apparently. In 2019. Well, you know. When you gotta go, you gotta was, go. Was he insured? <laughs> I don't know. He was worth $100 million, that's apparently. Not, I mean, that's not bad. That's that's not too yeah, shabby, yeah, but yeah, I've yeah. never thought of exploiting my dog. Right. right you know, well, here's the thing cat. I want to say. You, so how, what was the percentage of people that have started a social media? 35% have created accounts just for their pets to show them off. Right. So, um, I, may, I may have done that. Oh, this is, oh, you you may have done that. That's okay. I was trying to get through. Uh, so I created a Twitter account for uh, my dog Scrambles, who is no longer with us. Was he insured? No. See, you should have insured Scrambles. It seems. I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. To insure uh, your pet. Yeah. You know. I mean, I understand. Okay, we're not getting into that discussion. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but well, the, the pets become part of the family, well, the loved do. ones, and it's, it's You're not going to break down, are you? No, I'm fine. <laughs> Thanks for bringing fine. it up. <laughs> My allergies. But I, start, I started a Twitter account for Scrambles, you know, uh, when he was done, and it was just... How many followers did Scrambles have? Uh, he's up to about like 150. 
and he's still he's still on Twitter. Still. He lives on. <laughs> he lives on. <laughs> and Scrambles is quite a salty dog. He is. Yeah, Scrambles didn't yeah. like me. So, he, he, well, he did not like he's me. He's just all. as salty on social media. <laughs> He's, he's very, very, like yeah. he's he's very, very particular. Yeah. So, anyway, Scrambles the Wonder Dog. So, oh, yeah. no, Scrambles the Wonder Chihuahua. The Chihuahua. On, on, yeah, on as, Twitter. As the, as so, as go ahead and search that out. Scrambles the Wonder Chihuahua on Twitter. Do you, do you get anything from people visiting Scrambles Twitter? No, I mean, people will respond they, to things. They, they and, just, okay. yeah, you know, I don't. I don't what would Scrambles do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can go ask him. He's in a jar up on the, <laughs> up on the mantle. Do you want to bring him into the show? <laughs> People have asked us to bring the dogs onto the show. I could have done that, but I'm ashes. like, that's not right. Yeah, when 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 uh, our dog Buddy died, we still have his ashes. We've yet right. to, to to do anything with those. We were well, I'm by a tree, right? And I talked about. I said, you know, maybe it's time to to spread these ashes and and find some nice spot and have a moment and just reflect and remember scrambles and whatever. Okay. And my daughter uh, who, who, scrambles was her dog. Um, Anyway, um, but uh, you can take your ashes out for a while. <laughs> so she's very like, no, no, I want to, I want to, to keep them. And so I was like, okay, all right. Um, and I said, you know, so now scrambles is on the on the shelf. Yeah, it's, just, it's it, I don't know. It's yeah. kind of that's weird to me. It's morbid, it. and I'm like, I I think it'd be nice, but you know what? You know that's what? that's me, and and she wants to keep. I keep you know you know you can actually make a diamond out of, right, I, out of those ashes. Right. And we know Cooper and Binkley. Maybe they got something. There. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't really know how that all works. It's too technical for me. <laughs> why? Why did we go down the dog yeah. death hotline? What? What? Where did that? Why come would from? you do I'm that? I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to take a step. <laughs> <laughs> we do need to take a step. And you know what comes down naturally and smoothly? What's that? Is a garage door installed by Firehouse Doors? If it doors. doesn't, it should. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, their supporters here of Mike and John going on, got it going on. In fact, they're the first supporters. Yes, they. They are. were the first in line. They were here when we didn't even know what the hell we were doing. That's right. We still don't know. As opposed to now. If we were athletes, they'd be athletic supporters. <laughs> yes, they would. <laughs> They've been serving Livingston County residents for 24 years. A family-owned business. They strive to treat each customer like family. And, of course, Mike, a proud U.S. Air Force veteran. Firehouse Doors is your one-stop shop for residential, commercial, and rolling steel overhead door needs. And for the past 21 years... They've been Livingston County's only authorized distributor for CHI overhead doors. And, you know, right now we're running we're a special. special. Yes, we are. Uh, they which are. we said, we're, did we not say we were going to draw it today or are we going to? We were. Well, I said that, but what do I? Who pays yeah, attention okay. to me? Nobody. No, I try not. You're the news guy. Uh, yes, but they're giving away a preventative maintenance package for your garage door and opener, a 12 point inspection for up to two of your garage door and openers. And uh, we're going to draw for that sometime this week, and they'll be giving that away each week. Yeah, and so. you know what? When we draw for that, it'll be a surprise for us, too, because. Right. We'll do it at some point. We'll do it sometime toward the that's, end of the week. Well, that's what we say. That's what they say. That's what they say. It's April 6th, our two cent history lesson All today. Right. It's National Caramel Popcorn Day. Remember yesterday it was National Caramel mm. Day or Caramel. All right. Caramel Popcorn okay. Day. Did you hear, by the way, that um, um, Cracker Jack at the ballparks is going to come out with Cracker Jill in honor of women's sports? That's going to be starting soon. I don't know okay. if there's a prize in the box or not. Is it going to be Cracker different? Jill. I don't know. I think well, I think there's going to be six different versions, so there may be different things inside okay. with the caramel. Popcorn. But the but the but it'll still be Cracker Jack. It's Cracker same, Jill, you know. Well, and your right. Cracker Jack. You can't cracker just send Jill, Jack Jill. off. You have right. to pay him unemployment if you do that. <laughs> say that carefully. <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> okay, don't say that. You know, you didn't have to highlight that, did you? I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. You did. did. <laughs> there's a little, there's a little man inside my brain, but that's where he lives. He just listens, like waiting, waiting for someone to make some <laughs> salty. Yes, jump on it now. Go this make it innuendo. Is his name Jack? <laughs> you, Let's you, move on. Yes, National Tartan Day today. Right. Tartan, you tartans, not Spartans. Tartans. Tartan. It's a tartan. That's like Scottish, right? It, I don't because like the the is tartan. tartan? Uh, uh, is it a kilt? Yeah, like that's the yeah. uh, the design. It's a oh, tartan okay. design. I thought. If, you, if you say so. All right. It's planned your epitaph today. Right. <laughs> what you're gonna say, Jack? What's what's, what's no. Jack gonna say on your? <laughs> it's not gonna say anything. <laughs> sorry, Charlie Day. Oh. It's sorry, Charlie Day. It's um, it's for all of us who have been spurred oh. and yet somehow survived. Oh yeah. Yes. Sorry, Charlie. Charlie the Tuna. Okay. A lot of things happened on this day historically. 1889, George Eastman's 
Kodak camera went on sale for the first time. Okay. 1899. Remember your first camera? I remember, you know, it was a bit, ours, when we was first. was a Kodak. Well, our, yours was a Kodak? Yeah. I mean, I, I remember, you know, when it came to cameras, when, how big of a deal it was when we got a Polaroid and, you know, you can right. get the picture. Well, yeah, that's, oh, that was fancy. Yeah, oh, look at you, Rockefeller. Ooh. Mine was, it was like, a, it was just Shake a it. box, Kodak, you put the film in the back. Yeah. And you loaded it and you twisted it and you had to put the little bulb to go, on top. Go hide in a dark spot <laughs> to get the, <laughs> the right. film out. Yeah, that, those are good times. Yeah, yeah. You didn't just take your phone and take a picture. No, and then you had to take the film over uh, to the photo mat. Hey, kids. Hey, what's that a picture of? <laughs> yeah. Is that Jack? My my friend used to work at photo mat, and I would go hang out with him. We would, sorry, this is the truth. We would just so scan through people's pictures. pictures and check them out. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> this is the sad reality. If you think Mrs. we're, if if you think we're the there. only ones, you're wrong. Anyway. <laughs> Did you ever keep any of the pictures? No, no, but we just, uh, you know. <laughs> Robert Perry and Matthew Henson. I'm sorry, Admiral Robert Perry, okay. Bob to his friends, right. and Matthew Henson claimed to be the first men to reach the North Pole in 1909. All right. They claimed it, they did. Right. They tweeted it out from yeah. Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. what? The Italian government in 1928 banned handshaking <laughs> on the grounds that it was unhygienic. Oh. What? You don't want to shake hands. Mm-hmm. And it didn't mean this. No, no. It was no. handshakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Handshake shakes. Which, yeah, is a weird custom, really, when you think about it. Let's take the appendages that we most use, because we touch everything, yeah. and now let's touch them together yeah. and grasp and shake. You know what? We need a Mike and John handshake. You know, you know right. I can't, uh... <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Hostess Twinkies were invented by a bakery executive by the name of James Dewar in 1930. Mm. Twinkies. I was no. never a big fan of no, Twinkies, Twinkies myself. But people love them. Yeah, they do. That's kind of weird if you're a Twinkie lover. Roy Plunkett invented Teflon on this day in 1938. Thank you, Roy Plunkett. Mm. The TV dinner was first put on sale by Swanson and Sons in 1954. Oh, that was living. Yeah, it was. Get that little... Know what you're gonna tin foil yeah. tin thing with the separated right, and you get the, the, the mashed potatoes where the outside is molten lava and the inside is the North Pole, <laughs> <laughs> and then you try to mix it together to melt the Those ice cube times. in the middle. And you mix it and it's like, hopefully, I can take the temperature down on the lava while and it's melting this ice cube of mashed potatoes and and the meat that right. I kind of wondered if it was really some kind <laughs> you of get steak. some gristle in there. <laughs> Yeah, there's some kind of gravy on it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah, those are good times. Oh, good times. Swanson and Sons. Mm-hmm. Have your TV dinner. 1980, the Post-it note went on sale for the first time. You know, we need some Post-it notes. We do need Post-it we need notes. Post-it. We'll put that on the to buy list. We should have stole some before we left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're better than that. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, we are. We just didn't think of it. <laughs> we were too busy grabbing our stuff out of our desk. <laughs> That's true. 1992, public voting began on a choice of the Elvis postage stamp. Was it going to be the 1950s Elvis or Mm. the 70s Elvis? You know, you and I in a previous radio engagement. Yes, we had an Elvis hot tub party. Yeah, we worked at a station down in Monroe. uh, Yeah, 1992 that was. was. Right. uh, You realize that was 30 years ago, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. And you dressed up as young Elvis. I dressed up as old Elvis. Yeah, the, boy, you put on that Evil Knievel outfit. Oh man, I, that that, that jumpsuit. I'm like, do we have that? I, I, Any pictures? That, of that? I think I might. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, put it right up here. If, if I have it, yeah. If you don't, then I'm just pointing. Okay, to, <laughs> you're just pointing to, to Star, Star Trek. Trek. We'll and see. finally, it was a sad day in marital bliss, 1999, as well as people were celebrating the Elvis stamps when Carmen Electra filed for a divorce from Dennis mm, Rodman. I thought those kids months. were going to make it. They had a whole six months under yeah. their belt. Dennis wasn't crazy. Not at all. Dennis was different. <laughs> it's, a different it's a different cat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know I, I just he used watched to be this quiet kid well, playing for the Pistons, right. then he dated Madonna and all hell broke oh, loose. More or less, that's true. Yeah, I mean, there's more to it. I just watched uh, uh, the 30 by 30 uh, documentary on ESPN, and they have all the, it, which is a great series. Uh, I think it's up on Hulu. And uh, I was going back and watching some old ones. I watched one about the bad boys. Yeah. And then they had one just about Dennis Rodman. 
and his whole that well, so whole trajectory the, of yeah, because he life. ended up sitting at the yeah. uh, Silverdome parking lot or something, or the uh, Palace parking, Palace lot, parking lot. Yeah, well, that was yeah, and that, that was, was a, a moment of like, oh, something's wrong here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, anyway, all the tattoos yeah, and the spiky. Yeah. No, that was before. Stuff. No, that all the tattoos that that followed that followed that. The, followed the that, that was kind of yeah. yeah. Anyway, interesting. Right. Yeah. If you want to know more, there you check that out. All right. Anything else we have for No, Chase other program? than to say we love the folks at Spirit of Livingston and Howell, the custom t-shirt and screen printing company providing high quality graphic design services as they are for us here on Mike and John Got It Going On. And there's new stuff coming. That's right. If you go to MikeAndJohnPodcast.com, really cool. click on Merch Store, you'll uh, look at the line of, uh, of items that are there. Our basement collection. Yes, absolutely. Basement giggle. And there's more on the way, as Mike said. Yeah. Everything you need to know is in the name. They truly have the spirit of Livingston. Call them today, 517-545-8831, online, spiritoflivingston.com. You know, and I, I got to say, they have been doing an awesome job with us. The stuff that's up there now with the mugs and the T-shirts, the hoodies, yeah. the V-necks, um, travel mugs, too. Right. We've got the initial Mike and John collection, which is going to be the original or the OG as this <laughs> the grows. OG. The OG. OG. Like Simon G. So that's going to be the original stuff. So if you get on board early and get your original Mike and John going it on gear like that, right? Or I can put it up here and we can point to it later. <laughs> so you can get that or the new stuff that's coming out, the new line for spring. Yes, new Let's stuff. New stuff. You know what's also new? Cooper and Bakley Jewelers. New to Mike and John. That's got it right. going on. Sponsoring Gigo News on the Mike and John podcast. They are not sponsoring news anywhere else. No. Nowhere else. So thanks to stops here. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers for stepping up and uh, being a part of this community-based podcast. It's a movement, really. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a movement. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Slow motion, <laughs> but it's a movement. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you Thursday. Guitar out. I think we need a cowbell. <laughs> right. Shut up. All right, are we doing an exclusive after nah. the show content? Are we? Did well, we do you know, we you did, were kind of lazy yesterday. We didn't do one yesterday. And we, we want to set this after show thing. Well, uh, we have a we call have to, we have to make, and we're already late. We have on. an interview that we have to Should do. Should we do that as the, as the post show? <laughs> you know what? Why not? <laughs> you think so? Uh, well, all, right. Um, all right. Okay. If you insist. Well, I, I'm not insisting. I just said. No, but I hear what you're saying. You, you, you went along. This is the you. kind of people we are. We'll have to get yeah. consent. Make sure. Oh, we got to do that? Well, yeah. I don't know if we want to do that. Do we? I don't think it'll be a problem. You don't think so? We are, uh, we're giving a call to a young lady who, uh, one of the people that responded to our um, inquiry about people that would like to join us here on Mike and John Got It Going On. You know, is, uh, should maybe, we do this as like Hello? a, yeah. hi, is this Leah? Yes, it is. Hi, Leah. It's Mike and John from Mike and John Got It Going On. Yeah, we wanted to, and sorry we're a couple minutes late. We just got through with the podcast. And in fact, actually, we are in the post-show content part of the uh, podcast. This is the part that's only on YouTube, and we're still rolling. Yeah. Is it okay if we conduct this conversation as part of our post-show exclusive content? Absolutely. Look at okay. that. I she's, just, she's, she's, right. she's all in. This is all like right. the elevator this is, interview. Yeah, this is good. All right. So, so We're putting is, you on the spot, but you're stepping up, yes, so good for you. Yes, you are. All yeah. right. So, Leah, how did you find out about Mike and John Got It Going On? So, I had been kind of following the story as um, the podcast was taking off, and my mom actually um, had referenced me to the ad you would put on the Facebook page. The interesting thing about it to me is, I don't know, I just... I've always had a passion for media, and I've continually been impressed by the ongoing dedication to integrity um, that the Mike and John team have shown throughout the years, and especially in this last couple of months. Um, but overall, it really just struck me as something that could provide me with an experience to build upon. So I was really intrigued by that. Like, my mom just sent me the text, yeah. and I was like, hey, that, that sounds like something I could, so, you know, I might be into. Let me ask you, does your mom think we have integrity? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, well, Leah, I want to say right now, you're knocking this interview out of the park. Yeah, right you now. are. Okay, you, I mean, just, no, yeah, yeah. If mom yeah, said. No. <laughs> No, no, I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, I appreciate what you're saying. And, and to the point of what we're trying to do here with, with Mike and John Got It Going yeah. On 
is uh, we're, we're trying to return to that community based, uh, you know, exactly. uh, 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 you know, program uh, that I think mo a lot of media today and not any specific outlet, uh, but uh, just media in general seems to become some more, so much more homogenized. And it's just, it wants to just, it, it doesn't really want to dig into, it doesn't want to focus on community. It doesn't really want to focus on the things that connect us uh, as, yes. as people in a community. They just, it, it's, it's really all about, uh, you know, uh, sort of surface oriented stuff and sort of extracting ad dollars. And that's its only focus. And, and to the extent that, you know, look, we have advertisers, uh, you know, we want to be successful. We want to be profitable too. And there's no, we're not trying to say that that's not something that people no, should we, want. We have to put food no, on the we, table you know, just like anybody right. else. And we so. were, we were. It's how business works. Right. But it gets to the point where if business and, and again, to use the word integrity, if those two values start to clash and you prioritize one over the other, I feel like that's where it starts to get really, really sticky. And again, in no particular outlets, but I feel like it's something that overall is something that's a major concern but again i don't want to get on a soapbox there but right um, no 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 i it, and i think that's you know that's what we're looking for when we put out the call for yeah. for people uh to you know uh perhaps uh, get out there and, and help us uh you know we advertise for a sales leader uh somebody to come yeah. out and we and we've you know we've appreciated the responses that we've gotten so far uh, yeah. We were impressed with uh, your uh, your cover letter and uh, the resume that you sent along. You seem like a very uh, intelligent and earnest young woman. And um, so you're you're going to school right now, correct? Right now I hmm. am. I'm currently at Lansing Community College. Um, I'm pursuing my associates right now in journalism, and would be you know I'm kind of looking to expand upon that, maybe transfer at some point, but. Um, until then, right now, I'm just kind of working and balancing that work-school balance, um, which has been a challenge, but I feel like it's got me to a point in my life where it's, you know, in life, you have to learn how to multitask those sorts of things, and it's provided me, both work and school have provided me with a lot of different possibilities All right, um, so. and opportunities and different avenues to explore. So right now, I'm just kind of really trying to explore as many possibilities and opportunities as I can. All right. So uh, I think this is the portion where we have to ask some of those off-the-wall questions that they normally don't ask. Oh, that's in true. A right, interview. right. This is, it's, yeah. it's of one course. of those those types of things. Uh, favorite music artist? Ooh. I mean, if you're going to dance like nobody's watching, what, what artist are you putting on? I mean, it doesn't have to be your favorite. No, because, I, I you know. feel like, I was going to say, I always feel like such a stereotype, but like my go-to like comfort music, like when I need like something to boost me on a good day, I'll You're... just like put on some Beatles music. And I feel like such a stereotypical like basic person saying that, but I truly feel like there's something in the Beatles catalog for really any occasion. All right. You so know, she's done her research on music that John loves. <laughs> That's right. That. So, All right. So let's see. You, you've said we have integrity <laughs> and you love the Beatles. You're almost there, Leah. <laughs> she's done her research. Okay. So, so you're going to sit down and binge watch a TV show. What show are you going to watch? Ooh, okay. No, and you got to be honest I, here. Yeah, yeah. Integrity, time, remember. My all-time favorite at the risk of sounding like a geek is probably the West Wing. Okay, um, all right. I, I thought she was going to go really Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I got really into that over the pandemic, so. Right, a lot of people I mean, did. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it's a good time for binge watching, good time for catching all up right. on TV. What's your, sure. what's your guilty pleasure yeah. when it comes to either TV or, or music or whatever. just any, anything that, you know, you, you're kind of like, I like it, I know it's trash, but I like it anyway. Mike and John got it going on. Mike yeah. and John got it going on. I mean, we all we like for instance. For instance, I'll say this. So my guilty pleasure is is for whatever reason those cop chase shows that show like they, they have like from the helicopters and they show the and it's garbage. It's garbage content. I know it, but I just love them. 
And uh, you see now you see those videos that are on like uh, yeah. you know on uh, on TikTok or you know they're on social media where these. They this show is the these. part where John's trying yeah. to sound hip by using oh, TikTok so hip. references. So hip. <laughs> and uh, just ask my kids. And uh, yeah, so I, I totally get it's just garbage content, but I just love it. And my wife, my wife was, I'm watching. She's like, really? Hey, I'm not interviewing you. Yeah. We're interviewing no. Leah. No, this is about me. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. No, it's not about Leah. No. Anyway, just give her an example. Yeah. But no, I think it's going to be a really weird tie between, I feel like those Facebook baking ad videos, if that makes sense. Like you'll like scroll through Facebook and it'll show you like tips and tricks for making like a cake or some random dessert right i have like i feel like i've got so many of those saved and i'm like i'm never going to use these i'm not exactly a very skilled baker but like i i just keep saving them and i'm like i should probably get rid of these they're not it's not like a bad guilty pleasure i guess but it's like i don't it's it's something i'm intrigued by but i don't really understand so i'm always kind of like what is what is the deal going on here? So you're kind of a digital hoarder, is what you're saying. I, I you're you're so, hoarding yeah. these, you know. It's, but it's but it's it's better than you know hoarding newspapers or something where you you know you got them piled up in your basement. You right. just have these digital files that you're digital hoarding for for no those, apparent reason. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. So it's kind of like kids' art. Um, <laughs> what was the other thing? Because you said it was a tie. Oh, you went down that rabbit hole and now you can't get yeah. out. I went See. Down that rabbit hole. I'm thinking too you're, much about it. You're going to fit in here <laughs> fine, Leah. No, uh, right. Every show is us going down a rabbit hole. All right, so let's just say, so so we're going to put you to a little bit right. of a sales test here. And okay. and um, we're, John and I are going to be the business owners. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, right, we are. Yeah, we're, we're the not. business owners. Right. And our yeah. business is, we're a, we're a pooper scooper company. <laughs> <laughs> We're called Crabs More. That's a big jump from the, from, the, from the podcast case, but I appreciate the, the versatility and the flexibility there. <laughs> All right, so 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 we're we're a pooper scooper company called Crabs More. Crabs More pickup. Crabs More pickup. And and and. <laughs> <laughs> you mean pinch loaf and crap s'more? <laughs> okay, pinch loaf and crap pinch loaf and crap s'more yeah, is pooper scoopers. Yeah, <laughs> we want to clean up your backyard. So. All right. So, so you're you're coming into pinch loaf and craps more pooper scoopers, and you're and you're selling the Mike and John podcast. Yes. To give us a give us a quick pitch. Okay. All right. Elevator Good. pitch on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just for fun. Okay. Okay. If you're, if you're not comfortable with this, then we can we can just let you think about it, and then we'll we'll contact you later. Ooh. Here, you know what? Here's what I, I think. Don't give, I don't yeah, okay. don't overthink the poop right. scooper. If you, no, 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 all right, no. so if you think you can give a pitch now, go ahead. Or okay. we could give you time and we could call you back tomorrow and get the pitch. Yeah, during the post uh, yeah. show. If you need a presentation. Yeah. What, what do you think? Here's what I've got. Okay. All right. If you of the distinguished Cooper Scooper company are looking for something for a community-based platform to aspect news, to, to, to gather your news sources, a solid foundation, perhaps even an advertising platform, because we all know that if there's one business in this world that doesn't get the appreciation it deserves, it's poop scooping. It really is. It's true. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's a job that everyone needs, but no one wants to do. Yeah. And this could provide you with an opportunity for advertising, and of course, community business partnerships. And really, that is what the Mike and John Got It Going On podcast is all about. It is building that community aspect and also fostering a greater worldview. It is about building those connections with people. And that is something that could possibly, like I said, provide both a personal and professional connection to your pooping scooping so, needs yes yeah yeah no okay. matter no 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 poop is too big no poop is too small <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. <laughs> like I said, somebody's do it, All right. You know? So for for off the top of your head, that's pretty good, Leah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's pretty yeah. good. I mean, we, we kind of yeah. threw you right there, and, and that's a good test to okay. be able to do. Okay. Now, how much are you willing to invest in the Mike and John podcast? 
<laughs> Welcome to our multi-level, multi-level marketing. We're like the Amway of podcasting. For a low, low price, you can buy your way in. <laughs> and then you can go out and find three other suckers. Yeah, no, no, I'm no, kidding. No, 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 no we're okay. just kidding around. No, we uh, we appreciate you putting up with yeah. us uh, during, during yeah. this uh, post podcast. I've got I've got time, and I am you know, hey, I will invest my time in this way. There you go. Good if, answer. Yes. If you need somebody to dedicate time, what experience I have, I'm your gal. But All right. All right. How about uh, as far as uh, media sources where you go for uh, entertainment and. Uh, whether it's, I mean, we know you're on Facebook, obviously, but uh, yeah. do you do TikTok and Instagram and things of that nature? Oh, there's a guilty pleasure. I'm not on TikTok or anything. I'll occasionally go on Instagram, mostly just to kind of keep up with friends. Um, Twitter, I've always really enjoyed, weirdly enough. Talk about, again, talk about a guilty pleasure there. Yeah. But, um, and. See, because yeah. I think we need to get on Insta somehow. Well, we're on Insta, yeah. we're, but but we need more exposure. But on yeah, Insta. Just, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Insta Mike and John. It's like saying <laughs> no, no one, just add Insta. water. <laughs> it's, it's putting yourself out there to a new audience, right? Yeah. It's but yeah, I mean, it's something I'm proficient in and like have the experience with. It's yeah, okay. It's a pretty simple platform. Well, yeah. Leah, awesome. thank you so much for your time and putting up with our nonsense. We appreciate yeah. that. Um, and thank you for responding. And um, you know what? We are we are going to be back in touch with you. Yeah. All right. Okay. So thank you so much. You did a great job here. Thank you for your uh, your 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 thoughts and tolerance and tolerance yeah. <laughs> and not hanging up. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. see now, if you would have hung up on us, I'm yeah. just going to give you a little clue. If you would have hung up on us when we put you on the spot, we probably would have really, really, really respected that. Yeah. We're we are like, glad that all right, we got to get Leah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the one for us. Yeah, I, I get the feeling that's the one thing you don't want to do in an interview. No, yeah, you I never suppose. know. You got to know when to say no. But no, that was it. We, we appreciate it. And uh, as John said, we will be in touch. Thank you so much for, for yeah. putting up with us and applying. We appreciate it. All right. Of course. All right, Leah. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Okay, so, so that's I think our, she's, uh, that's she's probably going to say, that is the post-show content. Yeah. She's probably going to say, We conducted an interview. She's like blocking the number right yeah. now. Got that right. Block. <laughs> <laughs> These blockheads. So, so, all right. Well, very much. See, uh, we will be back in touch with Leah and, and uh, for all the other people that have uh, have applied There's, as well. I'm we sorry that they didn't get the post-show content. No, but this was our first Zing time. Zang. This was, it was our first set timing of wise. It just worked out that way. So, but if you'd like to apply, right, you can do so for right. the uh, Mike and John account executive position. That's right. That means sales. Mike and John for the win. That's the number four at gmail.com. All right, that's it for today's show. We will see you tomorrow. Can you turn it off right now? I'm sitting. <laughs>